Hello, everybody. My name is Justine. I work with Plan Tracker. Uh, Plan Tracker is a nationwide plan and self management community, and we are committed to simplifying the NDIS um, and assisting our participants and their families to exercise their choice and control when using their NDIS plan. Today, we have a set of three amazing uh, short webinars with the Carers Gateway um, and, and the services that the Carers Gateway, Carer Gateway uh, provides. Uh, first of all, we'd like to provide an acknowledgement of country. So I'll hand over to Fiona Davidson and then properly introduce her after our acknowledgement. Thank you, Justine. I join this meeting from Karamagable land of the Eora Nation in a suburb known as Narawena, which means quiet place on the hill in a suburb on the northern beaches in Sydney, New South Wales. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands where we all live, work, play and gather from today. We pay respect and deep gratitude to the elders, their ancestors and young people rising as leaders on these lands. May our hearts and minds be open to the depth of knowledge they have of this land with their continued connection to country and family. May we learn to live and grow in great abundance. I recognise that from the top leaves of the great gums to the roots deep in Mother Earth, through our bushland, vast landscape and our waterways, this is Aboriginal land, always was, always will be, never ceded. That was incredible. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, I am currently on Ghana land and I would like to obviously reflect everything you just said so beautifully and um, I would like to acknowledge our elders past, present and emerging. Um, today we're going to be talking, as I said just before, uh, about carer gateway programs that are funded through the Australian government. Um, some of the services uh, that the Carers Gateway, Carer Gateway provides is a website, phone or online service for carers to access practical information and face-to-face -face services to assist and support them in their day-to-day -day roles. The Carer Gateway provides many services, um, of which we're going to be talking about a few over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the Carer Gateway provides emergency respite, tailored support packages, in-person peer support, in-person counselling and facilitated coaching. Um, today we're going to be talking about the coaching um, uh, services through Carer Gateway and we're doing that with Fiona Davidson who is working with your side delivering the Carer Gateway supports. Uh, if you could just explain a little bit about how the Carer Gateway provides supports through different organisations, Fiona. Great, thank you. Great introduction. Um, so as Justine mentioned, the Carer Gateway is a national program, so a national government funded program. So what you'll find is there are different community services and not for profits that are predominant in certain areas throughout Australia will look after that region. Um, as I mentioned, I'm in Sydney um, on the Northern Beaches. So you, I work for a company called Your Side and we teamed up with the Benevolent Society and then we look after the Greater Sydney area. So from Illawarra up to Barara in the north and then out west to the base of the Blue Mountains around Penrith. And you'll have surrounding us is um, Carers New South Wales and Wellaways over in South Australia where Justine is, it's Carers, um, Carers South Australia who look after that area as well. So what happens, no matter where you call from in Australia, you will be directed to the provider that's in your area. So it's one number of the 1800 number um, and you'll be directed to the, the company that looks after your area, be it in Queensland or Western Australia. Okay, amazing. Thank you very much for that clarification. So Fiona, tell me a little bit about the coaching program that's within the Carer Gateway. How many sessions do carers receive if they sign up for coaching? And, and also how is the need for coaching also identified in that initial phone call? So when a carer registers with the Carer Gateway, they'll go through a comprehensive assessment with a care, customer care consultant. Um, we use a STAR assessment plan, and that allows us to look at seven key areas of um, the role as a carer. As an example, the caring role, their health and well-being, how they're feeling, finances. And then from there, if there are any like sticking points or points where they feel they'll need a little bit of extra help, they'll be offered um, one of the many different programs that we run within 
the Carer Gateway, coaching being one of them. So coaching, the coaching program specifically is about empowering and, and enabling carers. As we all know, um, I'm a carer myself. And so uh, with any, you know, carer or parent or a sibling or child, um, the caring role comes in swings and roundabouts. So with the coaching, what we do is help to um, help to enable and empower the carer. So when these little bumps come along, they've got the tools and strategies to be able to, to sort of bounce back a little bit quicker and easier than prior to engaging in coaching. Okay. So they have, we offer six sessions, we say per goal. Um, as an example, someone might come in to us and I'll use NDIS as an example because it's the audience that we're working with here is um, they might, there could be a change of circumstance like a behaviour or there's a transition into a different level like from early intervention into like primary school level. Um, so if there are any um, anything that they wish to um, improve in their plan, we will help them do something like an ideal care plan you know if I use the word if you had a magic wand what would your care plan look like and that can often be like oh I hadn't even thought about that and so this enables and empowers the coach to think oh ideal you know if I had a magic wand what would the care that my the person that I'm supporting what would that actually look like because I say to them you know, it, you, it's a 50-50 chance if you get a yes or a no, but it's a definite no if you don't ask. So oh, wow. use that, yeah, so use that magic wand and ask. And then, you know, how do we provide the data to support that request in the NDIS? So you've got, so that would be like around one goal. And then, you know, the carer is feeling really empowered and thinking great I've got this little bit of extra time now because I've got the supports in place through my NDIS plan what do I do with myself what does self-care look like so then we could do a second round of um, goals and sessions and focus on self-care so what would you know an ideal self-care look like for this person and then structure um, the sessions around that um, if you think what we do is we discover where they are now and where they'd like to be and we kind of create like a ladder and each session is like a different rung in that ladder. So then yeah. they've got this little ladder in their toolbox that they can use throughout their, you know, their carer journey and all their life. I feel like, and I could be wrong, but when we were talking last week, it was like that the next rung doesn't exist until you identify it and then you go up to that next rung and you keep identifying and keep, is that, did I misunderstand that from last week? Because that's what I, that was the magic that I was sort of envisioning yeah. is that the rungs, you know, they, the, the tiny little gains kept appearing and then the, there was the next, the next challenge or the next goal that, um, that appeared and then you work towards that, but I might be completely off there. Well, no, it's a little bit of that and a little bit of um, creating as we go and have, we often people will have an, when they create the desired state, they have a loose, they have maybe let's call them fuzzy little rungs. Yeah. So with each session, we solidify them. So it's like they take those steps up. So, and because we need to be flexible as well with, you know, and do a bit of test and measure, you know, we might think that, you know, going to the gym five days a week to get the health and fitness back there. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. But when we try and do it, it's just not realistic. So that's when the, maybe that rung is a little bit fuzzy. So let's just pull it back and maybe do three days a week. And that solidifies that rung in the ladder. And so is this, is that coaching program open to all ages and all, any age of any carer? Well, we have two um, sort of age groups within the Carer Gateway. If if we want to sort of generalise it, we also have a young carers program. So that's anyone um, underneath the age of twenty four. Um, and once they turn twenty four, they go into that what we call as the adult version. So at the moment, um, it's case by case, mm -hmm. but predominantly we're finding that it is more the over twenty four year olds that are accessing the the coaching service. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. And how does the coaching service help improve the lives of carers? 
Well, some of the feedback that I've received from different coaches that I've, the different carers that I've helped coach will be, it is often the first time that someone's held space for them because a lot of the programs like NDIS or My Age Care, the focus is on the person receiving or needing the care. So they, they feel empowered and acknowledged. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps to improve them because it creates the space where they can feel heard. Um, coaching also is more solutions focused um, because we don't do for, we do with the carer. So we empower them to be making the decisions for themselves. Um, we also are like a little cheerleader for them. So we help to, you know, celebrate their wins, which, you know, is a nice little boost to the ego sometimes when you're feeling a little bit deflated, right? Yeah. Like yeah. someone's going, yes, I'm good. And it sort of empowers you to think, yeah, you know, I'm not doing too bad. Um, and we also, as I mentioned before, because it's all about empowering and enabling people, we, um, the, the carers are able to gather like a tool belt of resources and strategies that they can implement throughout their life and in different areas of their life. It doesn't have to be just what we're focused on within the coaching sessions. Okay. And is it delivered in a, a different types of ways? Can you do face-to-face -face coaching, telephone, online? Is it, can you, do you have options and flexibility there? Yes, we sure do. Um, with your side and each provider will have um, different guidelines that they work with, but where, where I am, we um, do a combination. We can do sessions like we are now. We use Teams and or Zoom. Um, our office is in Chatswood, so you can come into the office and do face-to-face -face there. Mm -hmm. And then depending where the carer is geographically, we can come and meet them in the community. We work with the local councils and they have like community centres that we can go to as well. Oh, fantastic. So it, it's quite accessible. Um, yeah. Accessible. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, we've got to meet people where they're at. So we do the best that we can. Yeah. Love it. I absolutely or love telephone. It. If you just want to sit on the telephone and have a chin wag, then we could do yeah. that too. Yeah. Um, so next week we're going to be talking about the counselling service um, that Care Gateway provides. What's the difference between coaching and counselling? So if you think of counselling is more really that emotional support. Now, obviously, Taria will go into it in a lot more depth. But if you think that it's not just about um, opening Pandora's box with counselling mm -hmm. and, you know, really going back and going through everything that, you you know, potentially is, um troubled you it's about the focus is really about the caring role counseling you through your caring role so any emotions that potentially have arisen for you and so the coaching in contrast to that is offers real practical mm. supports so I mean we're not going to um not talk you through some if emotions do come up but that's not going to be our focus. We would probably encourage you to access counselling if there were more emotions that really needed to be addressed. So we, we will provide those more practical supports. So around navigating NDIS, My Age Care, as I mentioned, we help um, you know navigate creating an ideal plan around health and wellbeing. Or like if you, there's some financial concerns, you know, are you um, attached to all the resources that are available for you you know through like so in New South, in New South Wales we have services New South Wales that has 20 different rebates and discounts and mm. you know if I had a, a dollar for every person that I asked are they accessing those um, I'd probably retire because the question is often no yeah. so yeah so a real practical think emotional and practical and can you actually be running or can a carer be accessing coaching and counselling at the same time or is, does that not often work or happen? Well, it really depends um, on the individual and their capacity at that time. If they're um, quite emotionally dysregulated and really need to sort of um, really sort of regulate themselves and put some strategies in place with, co with the counselling, we would always recommend that first um, as an example 
I've had a, a carer who was quite dysregulated because of her caring role, but didn't have any my age care services in place for her mother, the person that she was caring for. So in that instance, because this heightened stress and overwhelm was caused by the lack of support into the house, we did work um, together. But what we did was had a couple of sessions with coaching and then put that on hold whilst they continued with the counselling because the services were put in place. And then we took up coaching once there was a little bit more regulation. So it's almost, it can be quite collaborative. Oh, very much so. I love that. Yeah. Um, so uh, that probably leads quite nicely into my next question. What have been some of the best carer stories and positive outcomes that you've noticed through the coaching service? One of, uh, there's so many that come to mind, but the one that comes to mind the most at the moment is um, a wonderful carer who was put in charge of actually um, managing the rest of her siblings in the care for her um, mother. Mm -hmm. So what we did in the um, first session was I introduced the thought of, you know, the ideal care plan and, you know, an ideal day for her and what the care of her mother would look like. Mm -hmm. So over two, uh, over a couple of sessions, we sort of unpacked that a little bit. And um, the result of that was um, she has gone from her title as roster manager, <laughs> where she was trying to organise a roster for all her sisters and that to the CEO of her mother's <laughs> care. That's the oh, title oh. that she's given herself. And there has been so many wonderful wins from that. These that she feels um, more balanced and um, cared for in her caring role, but so do her siblings because what came out from the conversations with her siblings was that they didn't feel like they were being heard or acknowledged or supported in what they did as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the impact of her becoming more structured in her role within the, the family unit was actually empowering the whole family. And there's a lot more constructive and resourceful conversations and the care has improved for everybody in the situation. Can I ask what might be a really ignorant question? Yeah. But how did she, did this, she, I pre presume it was a she. Yeah. How did, did she get the label carer? How, do you, how does someone become recognised as a carer? And can there be people out there that don't even realise that they're operating as a carer? Oh, I think the statistics are there's like 1.8 million um, carers out there that aren't being acknowledged so wow. it is yeah it, a, a carer is anyone that's supporting someone else who can't um, you know function at any kind of level um, and that can be from you know a young child or a, or a sibling when it comes to like a young carer that needs support in their daily functioning um, you know, for someone who's, you know, ASD1 can do pretty much everything that's equivalent to their peers of that same age. But there are, you know, a few little tweaks like they're, you know, maybe they're 12 years old and they still really don't know how to, you know, make a sandwich or something. So their sibling or their parent is helping support them. Um, up to, you know, a, a, a daughter looking after their parents who can't perform any of their daily tasks and everything in between and who recognizes that is that a gp that says you are a carer or <laughs> if only <laughs> oh okay yeah yeah I think it, the, the recognition comes through conversations and events like this and yeah. the implementation of the Carer Gateway, to be, um, yeah. to be perfectly honest. Like mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I have helped a lot of um, carers through as well is accessing the carer allowance and the carer mm -hmm. payment. Mm -hmm. They uh, didn't even think that that was a, an option for them. Um, so I think it's in having those conversations with the providers that we're connected to and just increasing mm -hmm. awareness and um, as an individual, just acknowledging that, you know, it's okay to acknowledge yeah. that you're a carer. Okay. And probably another ignorant question coming your way. No ignorant can you, questions. Can you be a short-term carer? Can, Absolutely. Can, okay. And, yeah. and, and access the carer gateway because of this, like the time-limited support, I suppose you could say. 
in that aspect, you would probably be an alternate carer. Um, okay. So there's there will always be a primary carer. So um, like from in in my instance, um, I I'm the primary carer for for I would be a primary carer for my daughter, but my God love my sister, she will take my daughter to support me as mm -hmm. an example um, and she would be the alternate carer so I mean my daughter doesn't really need much support mm -hmm. but she um, if it was someone who had a higher level of support then there'll be an alternate carer so when it comes to the packages as an example there is um, if you think one financial package per um, care recipient Whereas okay. if there's an alternate carers, the, the, the um, supports like coaching, counselling, peer support, young carers, they can be for alternate carers as well. Okay. All right, Does that answer your question? I think so, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, okay, so how does someone access the services of the Carer Gateway? So the... Um, it's going to see like if I slide over, you can see. <laughs> just popped it in the chat anyway, in the comments anyway. But yes, yeah. please. Do so um, you can um, go to the um, the Care Gateway website, which is Care Gateway or one word dot gov dot au, or you can ring the one eight hundred number, which is one eight hundred four double two seven three seven. Um, if you perchance are in the the um, the Greater Sydney area and the Northern Greater S Sydney area, you can go to the Your Side website, which is yoursideorgau and okay. then if you're in the southern area of the Greater Sydney area, you can go to the Benevolent Society, and there'll be a tab up the top that says Care Gateway, and you just choose one of the options, which will be um, make a referral. And you would find that um, if you go to the Care Gateway website as well and put in your area, you would find the same providers that way as well. Okay, fantastic. Fiona, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate um, the time that you've given to us to share your knowledge and um, your joy, obviously, and your passion for working um, with the Carer Gateway, doing what you do. It's such an interesting, it's such an interesting topic to be talking about. And I'm so glad that we're doing two more sessions where we're going yes. to be talking with Taria on Monday about her counselling role and mm -hmm. then with Yara about the peer support program that is yes. the gateway as well so that's the following Wednesday on the 19th so um again I I just have learned so much in in the short time that we've um, been talking so if anybody has any questions they can most certainly refer back to the caregateway.gov or just caregateway.gov.au um or give us a call at plan tracker 1-800-549-670 have a fantastic be my tbsn days yeah you're amazing i'm <laughs> um, looking forward to our next session next monday at 11 yeah in Eastern Standard. Thank you so much, Fiona, for your time and I Pleasure. hope everybody has a happy and wonderful afternoon. Yep. Great. Thank you. Bye. Bye.